Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. I'm right now in Speigerstoff, I think that's the name, but I will correct it in a second. But today I'm with someone that completely changed my life. That person is right here with me. He's American, he's been living in German for a long time. I don't really know for how long. He used to be the USD team manager, but he has a couple of other things that he has done throughout his career within skating. And some of you may not know him, a lot of you may know him and love what he did, some may not. So today we got Mr. Mark Corte. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Mark? I'm good, man. I'm good. Really good. I'm, I'm actually really honored uh, that uh, you want to you have a talk um, because, uh, you know, really skating hasn't been a part of my life now for probably since 2012 or something like that. I dedicated um, at one point more of my life to military mm -hmm. because uh, I thought I might have the opportunity to, uh, to actually get my military retirement. Mm -hmm. So I had a 20 year break in service, so that's a long time. And uh, yeah, so the good news is, is that uh, in five years I will be able to get my military retirement. So. So yeah, so it's been a long time since I talked about skating, USD, power slide, you name it. But I promised you, and I stand by it, uh, whatever you ask me, I will answer. That's amazing. Honestly. <laughs> That's what it needs to be. That's why we're here. So just to explain to people why or how we ended up getting together. So randomly, I'm staying by the owner of Entente, Mark Ois. It's in Germany. It's in a town called Speigerstoff, is that it? Yeah, that's right. I didn't even knew the name of the town. It's a smaller town. In, it's a small town in Germany. I came to Germany for a toy fair in Nuremberg. And Mark asked me if I wanted to stay. I ended up staying. And out of nowhere, I find out that Mark Corti <laughs> was a neighbor. And it's been so long. We, we keep in contact. Like every now and then you're like, hey, I'm thinking of going to Portugal. Where should I go? And yeah. uh, like when the World Championships of soccer, because this guy is a huge fan of soccer. That's right. He contacts and I'm me. a huge I, Portugal fan. Yeah. See? I love Portugal. So at the end of the day, we kept in contact, but there's some things that we never really spoke about. So yesterday I got to thank you. Last night I, had, I told him, look, I, even if we don't do anything tomorrow, I need to go to your place, just to, I, I need to tell you something. So I had to, I had to stop by and just say, look, you changed my life. And we'll speak about that in a second. But I want you to tell me, how did you got into skating? So it's actually a, a pretty interesting story. Um, I had been living in Germany since uh, I was here in the military. So I was uh, active duty uh, cavalry scout. Uh, I used to be a border soldier. Okay. So I protected the West German border from uh, the area of the Trizonio point. So uh, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, and West Germany. From 1986 till almost the end of 1989. Okay. And then I stayed in Germany and uh, I did a bunch of different jobs and whatnot, uh, a lot of sales jobs. I even uh, for a time sold encyclopedias. Oh, wow. That were worth uh, 6,000 euros sold them to people I didn't know in about 15 to 20 minutes in a different language. Um, and so sales kind of came naturally to me. Oh, and how old, how old were you at the time? Without telling us how old you are. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm in my early 20s, you know. Um, and uh, so I did a bunch of jobs and whatnot. So the, to cut a little shorter there, 1998, uh, Christmas time, I saw an advertisement for a job in Bindlach and um, by a company called Powerslide. 88? N 98. Okay. 98. So uh, I went in there, uh, long story short, I saw Matthias and Stefan at the time, uh, his partner, and basically I said, uh, you can stop looking, I'm the right guy for this position. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You don't want anyone else to, other than me. And what was the position? Uh, and I think the position was just a regular just a salesperson or even, even just an admin position, right? Um, I was like, you don't need anybody else. I'm the best. I, I'm amazing. <laughs> you know, I, 
uh, I, I speak German. To be fair, my German probably wasn't that great at the time. I mean, it was okay, but um, but I was like, uh, you know, whatever you need to do, it, I can do it, and I can probably do it better than anyone else. And then so Matthias basically said, all right, we'll give you a try. We'll see what you can do. Um, that was so. I my first day was the uh, second of January, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. And uh, uh, just to make a long story short, about a week later, uh, I kind of took over the role of all things USD, all things aggressive. To be fair, okay. Um, all things aggressive skating. You got to remember at this time. Um, so was Matthias doing? Because at the time USD was already a thing. USD started in ninety seven. USD was in its infancy. So the 98 USD thrown skates. Yes, the one that people really the started. 99, the very first ones to include the, the old blue throne and before that was the Democlass, mm -hmm. you know, or Democles. Yeah, which was an open mold right? with a different soul plate. Um, you know, so, so, and remember during this time, Power Slide uh, used to be the importer of hypno skates that's how they basically had their start and matthias of course uh you know doing uh quad skating and, and speed skating his whole life selling out of his trunk mm. uh and and then after graduating uh college or whatnot him and stefan put this you know together or whatnot so bottom line up front is you know power slide had its infancy in fitness recreational skates and then matthias uh in his genius, along with the contacts that he had, Arlo, Shane, all these, all the names that you know, yeah, uh, put together a collaboration with, at the time, the greatest skaters in the world, arguably, right? You had Julio and Arlo Eisenberg and, and Petty and Latimer, all these names. Um, and so they had put these skates in manufacturing. And quite honestly, at the beginning, it wasn't that successful. Oh, really? I mean, I always it, thought there, there was... was a lot of hype there. It was like, but uh, long story short, we had a lot of skates that need to be sold, right? Okay. And uh, I kind of also took that role on as being, uh, so I was international sales manager as well. Um, and, uh, but also had a lot to do with all things USD or all things aggressive, right? Okay. Um, and, and like I say, when I say, uh, it's not that I ran it or whatever. It's just a collaboration, right? You have to understand that Power Slide, it's a whole bunch of different people behind the scenes that make things work. Yeah, it was way smaller back in the day. Way sure. smaller back in the day. Um, very, very small team. Design was one guy, Jürgen Rank. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, he later turned out to be the uh, chief designer at uh, Adidas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, great guy. Um, and then later they took on a second designer and then there was, you know, in and out. So again, there's a lot of history there behind the scenes. Um, but uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because I felt at the time a responsibility, a passion, you know, a happiness. Uh, this was like, you know, my happy place, like kind of like a dream job, right? Mm -hmm. Way back in the day, I did skateboarding in Cali. You know, I'm originally from California. Um, but it's just like, I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, uh, what's not to like. And so, uh, I had developed a good relationship with the skaters. Uh, the communication was obviously a little bit better, right? Cause I'm American. They're American. Mm -hmm. Uh, we speak, you know, we can, they I, would relate more with it, you. It, it's relatable. Um, but again, I'm probably skipping over parts or whatnot, but the bottom line is I loved it. It was my passion. Okay. Uh, for me, I was USD, and uh, I, that was my mindset, okay? Yeah, Power Slide owns USD, and Matthias is the boss and all that, but I am taking responsibility of this brand. I wanna, I'm happy to be the face of this brand, along with the skaters, and you know, my skaters are everything, you know? Uh, to me, uh, the core of USD was, and we talked about this earlier, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is where we're going to start getting into uh, yeah, personal philosophy stuff. But to me, uh, USD was the personalities behind the skaters. So bottom line, USD is the skaters. 
But what does that encompass? That encompasses things like FP, and this encompasses things like skating, uh, you know, behind the scenes, Senate, and Medium, and all these different companies that were hyper and just before. Some of them even died mm -hmm. during this time. And then develop, you know, when I looked at, I showed you some, some of the yeah, old. We have a huge connection, co collection so, here that most people like. I've like never when seen I see a, like a Dyna, a Dyna uh, champion Baumstimmler wheel or something like that. These are all, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, even this route six. I mean, my point is, is that you have core skaters that have a long history behind them since the infancy of skating. Back when Brooke Howard Smith and Arlo and all these guys were, were you know, um, you know, starting it out. So then you get this group, and arguably they are the best in the world, undisputed, right? At this time, and this is my point, from probably '98 to say 2001, maybe even. This is the best team in skating. You can be a Solomon fan. Was the, was the team chosen before you got there? The team was 100% chosen before I got there. Yes, 100%. And again, this is the core team. I came at about the time when the team decided that the next pros to come on board was going to be Kevin Gillen. Okay, which is already... And, and Brian... Sh and uh, excuse, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like this. Was... Uh, and Brian Shima, right? Because they were going to lose uh, Arlo. And, and then so that was the configuration at the time. Um, Randy Spicer, RS Randy, Randy Spicer. Randy Spicer. I mean, to be fair, Randy Spicer was always USD more or less. Um, but again, there's been many configurations, but you know what I'm talking about, that core group. Mm -hmm. um, that core group had to do with guys like from FP, Future Prospects, Joe Navran and, um, and, and the guys that were from SoCal. And, and so my point is, is that this feeling um, of the lifestyle, mm. I felt was what was the success and the driving force of USD. More than anything else. More than your manufacturing, more than thrones, you know, more than... Uh, yeah, kind of like that 50-50 collaboration, Senate collaboration, skates with 50. I mean, you got to imagine that at this time, we are the first skate company that did any kind of customization. Yes. On, this on, is, this right? is true. Yeah, but even staying on what you were saying before, it's, I remember my first time to Lausanne was 98. And that was about the time that the thrones were just out. Yes, yes. I remember seeing Dustin Latimer skating, just, just going around. A very different type of pro compared to the other ones. He was very on his own, just going, just sitting here, going, doing a trick, sitting on the other, but always by himself. And I remember seeing a very outgoing Josh Petty, also with the same tumor soul plates, the very big soul plates. But even Josh was on his own a lot. And this was before Mark Corti. Yes, and yes. After Mark Corti, every time that I remember the USD guys, I remember them as a team. So yeah. I don't know if that's the main reason why you ended up going from sales to becoming like a, a team manager. If you were chosen by the skaters, if Matthias chose you, if you just stepped in and said, from now on, I'm going to do this. It's something that I'm very curious about because it, it, it changed. I also want to ask you, who was yeah. responsible for changing it from universal skate design to USD? Was that you or before you? So uh, actually, it's, it's, so let me back up, answer the first question. So the first question is, is that uh, honestly, it just evolved like that. So I was doing, uh, my main function was to sell USD skates. Yes. Okay, that's my main function, uh, or it was supposed to be. And, and, and to take it even a step further, my main function is to sell power slide products. Yes. Okay, so not necessarily USD. Of course, I spent more time, effort, and I had more interest was your baby. in USD. Okay, so, um, so I, I want to make that perfectly clear. Matthias, so where's the camera? Okay, yours is this one. Yours is this, this is one. mine. Okay, 
<laughs> Matthias Matze, who I love to death, okay, he's the boss. Yeah. I call it's him. always been. For yeah. all the years I worked at Power, and to this day, I still call him boss. Yes. I go in and say, hey, boss, because he's my boss, right? I'm about to see him tomorrow. I call him boss, too. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I do not work for I've him. I've been calling him boss since, <laughs> since I started working at Power Slide, okay? Matthias is the boss, period. But... Matthias uh, is a very, very, very talented guy, okay? Uh, I'll just put it like this. He knows when to give you some leash and let you run with it. And he knows when to pull you back a little bit like that. Luckily, Matthias really honestly let me do whatever I wanted to do whatever I thought was right. And because there was a mutual trust there in a lot of things, um, like I told you before, a lot of people don't realize that most of the slogans for, for USD in that tradition, um, I came up with today's visions, tomorrow's reality, or just you name it, whatever you we see. We have a on, dream. All these, all these different things. Um, it was a collaboration, yes, always a collaboration. Most of the time it had to do with something that came from a skater, right? So. Julio wants to skate to be juice, you know, with the juice plate and with 50-50 frames. And whatever. we're going to do it just like that. End of story. That's what we're going to do it, right? So uh, in that aspect, and you can ask the skaters yourself, that aspect, uh, I am the, ad and this was my mindset. I am the advocate for the skaters to Matias and Power Slide. That's me. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that got their back. Like the middleman. I'm the, I'm the middleman, but I'm the one that has their back. Yeah, straight I get up. it. They want something a certain way. I'm going to bend over backwards to advocate this. Now, again, I want to make it perfectly clear. Most of the time, Matthias is on board anyway. Matthias understands the value yes, but it, of, it, of that. But if... If it's on like the thing, I would be like, hey, come on, it's, you know. It's I can big. give you an example of something very simple. So I, I'm, with what you just said, PowerSlide or USD was the first company and probably the last, because I don't think of any other company who really made pro skates, who really yeah. used as an example. When I first started skating for USD, my first skate, the first skate that you sent me was the Abdel Goldberg UFS Throne, which had a ground, a ground control frame. Yeah. And a rain, was it a rain liner? No, no, that one came with the regular liner, but the rain liner came on the Dominic Segona with physics frames. Correct. And it was at the same time. And this is a UFS and, throw. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. the Abdil came with the ground control frame and Eulogy wheels. Yes. And that was the real pro skate. But at a later stage, what happened was Kaiser started growing. And of course, Kaiser had to happen because all the skaters were having different frame companies and then different wheel sponsors and all that. So for Power Slide would be also a way to monetize their skates. Well, right? uh, yes and no. Um, and I'll come back to that because I wanted to answer your other yes, questions yes. so that people Please really do. understand about... about uh, so when, about the time I came, USD was upside down. Yes. That was the name Upside Down. And right about the time I came is when that transition started to be a different discussion, right? So uh, actually, it became USD before it came Universal Skate Design. Mm -hmm. Universal Skate Design, um, you know, yes, I, I did come up with Universal Skate Design. But again, I don't know if it was me or a collaboration. Again, this was a long time ago. Yes. Um, but even if it wasn't me, I'm pretty sure I was like, yeah, universal skate design makes sense. Yes. You know, um, it, it could have been me. I just don't remember. It doesn't matter. But um, so that's why. Um, and then, but I was an advocate of saying upside down. Um, everyone liked upside down because when it originally came out, everyone saw the stand where they had uh, on the stand at the, at the Messe, mm -hmm. everything they had uh, upside down. This right? is before my time. Yeah, everything they had upside down on the on the ceiling. Oh, I didn't know on that. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. And this is again before my time, right? Um, and so everybody knew the name upside down. It was smart marketing, then. right? Um, <laughs> but at the time, it just it didn't fit in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to portray. And I'm almost positive uh, some of the skaters weren't 
necessarily down for the name or whatever. So it just evolved into universal USD, obviously upside down is USD, right? And then evolved into universal skate design, right? So uh, to, uh, to come back to the other uh, thing that you mentioned is that you have to understand and people have no, they, they, people behind the scenes, they can't fathom. Skaters are like, um, they think everything just falls from heaven, you know, like everything's just wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. But back in the day, you have to understand components for these pro skates. That was not easy shit. Yes, and where were they assembled? Because that, at the end of the day, most of the things were not produced in the same bro, factory. Bro, you don't understand. The, I, Me, myself, along with Matthias and Bauer and everybody, you assembled we skates. were in the, in the warehouse putting together freaking skates. I can only imagine. I can tell you how many... I put a lot of skates together, and Bauer, and Matthias, okay, and tell Stefan, me how many. <laughs> and, and everybody who worked at PowerSlide, it doesn't matter if you were in the, in the, in the office or whatever, uh, it's very possible you had to go out and build skates. Yes. And with, let me tell you, some of them were a pain in the ass. I hated Senate uh, frames on skates because of pain in the ass. Actually, 50-50 wasn't very easy either, you know? Um, it was, but that's beside the point. My point is, is that... Um, and again, probably after this interview, you're going to be like, damn, man, he's sucking Matthias's cock. You know, he, he thinks it. But I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, and again, you know, me and, me and Matthias uh, go way back and we have, we have had yes. our differences. So is his net, right? Uh, but I will say this. Uh, for me, uh, and I call him Mate, you know, everyone says Mate, right? Um, this dude is a visionary. Visionary, talented, talented dude. So he's the type of guy that's like, after the weekend, comes in on Monday and says, all right, guys, let's go here. Well, I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do. So we're going to take this frame, you know, we're going to use this and we do that, put it together with this. And, we, and you're like, what the fuck, dude, man? Do you not do something on the weekend for fun? You know what I mean? Like his, his mind is always, always, always moving. And he's he's done so many innovations yes. that you can't even fathom how many innovations. And he'll probably innovate his whole life. I, but my point is this, is that at the time, we were ahead of our time mm -hmm. when it came to skate customization. Mm -hmm. When it came to saying, yeah, John Julio wants to skate this way. We're going to make it exactly that way. Now, let's come full circle, because you talked about Kaiser, okay? So, when someone has a full USD Kaiser skate, like Champ, yes. then he's making royalties off what? The boot? The frame? The frame. So the wheels? Oh, so, you, were you able to give them better royalties on that skate? Yes! What would be the royalties on that? I have no idea. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to disclose that, but I'll just put it like this. Um, it, it depends on who you ask, okay. uh, uh, okay. what's fair and fair. But I mean, at the, at the end of the day, um, I mean, I'm military anyway. So when I say I'm military, I mean, hey, you signed up for it, bro. So if you, if you agreed to it, you know, that's on you, right? Yeah. So um, I think, and, and I'll even go into it because I told you I would go into it. Like even today... When, when they say, oh, we're, we're giving more royalties now. or we're, I mean, to me, who gives a fuck? Honestly, I, I don't. And who really gets the royalties? I, mean, I, I can talk with you about that too, because that's kind of like a, yeah. a touchy subject to me. You know what's funny? Because this is actually, when people say they pay 30, a lot of people out there don't know. They pay 30 if the sale is made direct. That's true. If the sale is made through a shop, they don't pay 30. That's right. But should be violent, not, like... Should we make the shops the villains here? Are the shops the villain? The shops are definitely not the villain. You got to understand that, um, especially in the infancy of uh, a brand, any skate brand, any brand, whatever, you have to basically equal out your margin to make it profitable at all. I'll tell you so that people understand many skate runs were zero profitable. I can imagine. I can imagine. Some USD years, okay, uh, were not on the plus side, but the skaters still got their royalties. 
So you got to understand that, and again, I've been international sales manager for many years. So um, you have domestic, so you have your shops, and they have a standard margin. Agreed? Mm -hmm. You have your big box stores. Mm -hmm. They get a better margin, right? Because you want to be in their big store, they have the bigger... They, they have and the they bigger, buy more quantities. They still. buy more quantities? More, right? Then you go directly to the people, then your margin is larger, right? Yes. But the shops don't want you to go direct because what's the purpose of having a shop then, right? And if, so it's a, it's a dance, right? And it's got to be... And if it, you think on the promotion side of things, yes, with, with direct sales, you end up getting a bit more of a marketing to do a little bit of more of a budget to do the marketing, but at the end of the day, where do people actually go and try the skates on? Which is extremely important. We know that exactly. If you if you if you know how it works with an online shop nowadays, you would know that probably almost fifty percent of the skates, I wouldn't say fifty, but close to, a lot of times they don't fit the way that people want. And what Absolutely. happens? What happens 100%. then? They ship it back. And what's happening a lot is that the very few shops that we have, people go, they test the shops, and then they go online and they buy it for cheaper. And then the yeah. shop is just a testing place, but who's paying for the rents, who's paying for all that? But anyway, that's a different subject. I don't well, want to take exactly. you out of... Well, exactly. No, no. I mean, I'll just say this. If, if there's any claim to fame um, for me and my connection to uh, USD or here, left, right, center, I don't care. My biggest claim to fame, as I will tell you, is that as an international sales manager, I was 100% innovative when it came to sales structures. Mm. When I came to USD, we were available in five countries worldwide. Right about the peak, we were available in 40 countries worldwide and even more after that because I went to the different places, Korea or Africa or uh, different places in Europe or even Eastern Europe. And I said, look, don't let me tell you how to sell right? You tell me what's the best structure for your country. Is the best structure a distributorship, right? You get your distributor margin and then you sell how you see fit. You promote how you see fit. Okay. Is the best structure that we have uh, reps in your country mm -hmm. and we give the rep their cut on there and then they distribute it to the country or is it better we do it completely directly to your, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, That's my sure. claim to fame yes. because I actually went to the trouble and Matthias gave me the freedom to go to those countries and work it out with him. And by the way, on the side, oftentimes we got to do a USD tour over here that was completely paid by the customer. Yes. Oh, but see, a lot of people don't understand this, right? They think, you know, everyone's just throwing money around and just having a good old time. But, uh, and that was my point to the skaters back in the day. It's like, hey, well, man, someone's got to pay for this stuff, right? It's yes, part know? of the marketing budget that the, the distributor would need to have. So if there's no yeah. distribution, so if you went to South Africa, I remember that yeah. in South Africa, there would be USD on all the shopping malls because there was these big chain stores selling it. That's in right. Korea, you had also a good distributor. Distributor. In Russia, you had an amazing, and those That's were right. the places, the UK, those were the places where you guys would have That's USA right. tours. That's right, because um, uh, we came to understanding uh, about what we're going to do for marketing. And obviously, the more skates we sell, the more stuff we want to do and we can do, right? Of course. Obviously. Um, but I'll tell you, there was some tours were better than others. I mean, me, I loved every tour. I love being with the with the skaters, uh, and and again the long list of skaters that I uh, traveled with was ridiculous, and it's kind of ironic. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, and I get a little choked up about it because you know here I am, I'm 30 years old at the time. All the skaters are like 18, 19, 20. You think about that. So then. so so basically, it's ironic that I'm the <laughs> I'm the one who's in charge, yeah. <laughs> and I'm probably possibly the most immature dude there, and. Uh, Fitting in somehow and, uh, and planes, trains, automobiles, uh, you name it. I mean, just thinking about the, the, some of the tours we did in Europe with just 10 skaters, you know, eight skaters, seven, whatever it was, all the gear, trying to get on trains, trying to get on planes, trying to get in cars, vans, this, that, and the other. After the long night. <laughs> partying all the time and actually showing up to places on time and stuff I mean I'm telling you it, it was nuts and uh, 
I mean, uh, you got you got Randy Spicer and Louis Zamora. Uh, or actually, it was Louis Zamora doing guacamole in the in the hotel room and this that and the other. And um, and I showed you that from what Arlo wrote yes. one time. It's mine. Uh, I mean, he meant it as a joke and well, a serious joke. But I mean, yeah. Uh, at some times, I was like a, a drill sergeant, kind of like you know, dudes. You can't just be throwing your shit all over the place, putting your cigarette butts out on the. On the pillows, on the pillows and stuff. Uh, you know, most of the stuff that I have, and I have like T-shirts and uh, just old nostalgic skating gear. Was most of it was what the skaters left in the hotel, just randomly, just laying on the ground, or you know, like I don't even think they they only brought socks enough for the tour. You know, like like they didn't even wash anything really or anything. You know, it's just like. Dude, it's touring. You're just, you know. It was, but you know, it, it was it was fun a lot of times, um, and I have the fondest of memories because uh, it was just it was it was crazy. It was crazy. You must have done something right. We were talking about that because at the end of the day, most of those guys that we were talking right now, a lot of them, maybe because of the pandemic, some some of them never really left. But the truth is, most of them are still related to skating. And a lot of them nowadays are very active in skating and older than you were at the time. Yeah. I mean, it. I mean, uh, you know, look, it, it has nothing to do with me as far as I'm concerned, um, except maybe just a little bit of structure, maybe, you know, or, or being a part of that at that time. Yes. That's, you create the legend status for a lot of them. I mean, you know, look, John Julio was always going to be a very successful dude, period. And I want to talk about him for a minute because I'll never forget. Um, one time I was like, during tour or something, I'd, John would always write in this, uh, like, kind of like a, not a journal, but like mm -hmm. a scrapbook, maybe, right? Like a notebook. Whatever. And he'd have fucking, like, clippings and stuff that he would, you know, clip out and then, like, paste in there or whatever you know copy and, paste <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no but but like before like on a computer you know before what i'm saying yeah like he cut out something before big and then he'd and then he'd fucking glue it in there or whatever and then you know i'd be like bro what are you doing he's like oh you know i like to just when i have an idea or whatever i'll put it in the book or if something so john was always uh you know putting Together, putting together what he now has. But remember, he's had a few companies along the way too, right? Yes, and he had to leave a couple of them. Right, so, um, and then if you look at like, uh, you know, Mind Game and uh, some of the, yeah, some of the other, or yeah, here, Dino, Dino Wheels. That Champion, I didn't even know about this. Champion uh, yeah, most people probably have never even seen that one, right? But, um, uh, but, I always knew 100% John Julio was going to be amazing. It was close to not. He was close to had to leave it like before, right before them. It was like, apparently... Maybe because he married a German woman and uh, she, she gave me even more structure. Or maybe, yeah, maybe tried to go more on the safe side. Yeah, maybe. But right. No, but I, I always knew 100% John Julio was going to do something amazing and great because, and I want to make this clear as well, he has passion that few others have. Okay, and uh, I'm sure he's been burned many times <laughs> by many different people, many, many different companies. Um, uh, but uh, he has the passion, the knowledge, the structure. I mean, he has everything needed. But in their own right, all of these guys are successful to one point or another, right? Um, the only thing that, and we talked about this, is when I came back in 2010 or whenever it was to... USD was... Uh, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah. Before that, let's try to put it on a timeline, because I know what you want to... Yeah, know. okay, good. Okay. I mean, it, it, my whole point is that uh, I'm a loyal motherfucker. End of story. All right? You, don't, you like me, you don't like me, I don't give a fuck. Yes. That's life. That's what it, but I'm going to be me, right? And uh, uh, I appreciate like-minded folks that are loyal and uh, that are genuine, right? 
and uh, don't put just a face on uh, just for the sake of uh, doing that, you know. Um, so loyalty is important. Yes. My big deal at USD was always you are going to recognize the blood, sweat, and tears that your motherfucking forefathers put into this company, mm. whether you like it or not. Right? Yes. So when you get certain skaters, well, I'm not going to say their names, right, who come in later into the company, right? I don't give a fuck how good your skills are, right? Um, if you don't recognize what came before you and give honor and props to what came before you to make this even happen so that you get your shot, I'm not down for you. I'm not down for you, period. Do you think that could have burned you? I mean, it's, it's possible. I mean, the, at the bottom line is I made the choice. I made the choice. Um, as I told you before, and I won't get into it, um, I basically I'll say it like this. Yeah, that's kind of... You might have to cut this down. I mean, No, we don't. We, we don't just put it in a way that we, we want to get it as raw as possible. The, the bottom line is this. You don't need to put names out there? It's I, no one was more down for USD, encompassed USD time and, and, and effort in USD than me. And wants the best for USD than me. Yeah, because at the end of the day, no they, one. They, at the end of the day, they were the pro skaters. They were the pro skaters. They would be, they they knew that sooner or later the companies go through waves. You know, right. like when it's here, they can just hop to something else. Right. And that's I'll get there. So so if you are going to put these other people, okay, above the legacy, I'm out. Okay. That, that's, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. You want to put this over here above the legacy, right? Don't count I'm sure that. you've heard legacy before, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, there wouldn't be a fucking USD legacy without all these guys' names that, that you know and love, mm. okay? You would not fucking have a USD without Dustin Latimer or fucking Brian Shima. Or Aaron Feinberg, John Julio, Champ, Arlo, you, you wouldn't fucking have it. And I don't give a fuck who you are. If USD didn't run fucking aggressive skating from about 98 till about 2001 or whatever, how far you want to take it, you wouldn't have aggressive skating at that level like it was. Yeah. You got to understand how... How many sports do you have where you have an undisputed, undisputed number one fucking team? Maybe soccer, Bayern Munich. Maybe uh, Formula One, right? Ferrari or fucking Mercedes or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Being a part of the fucking best. I can imagine the comments are like, who the fuck does this Cordy think he is or whatever? Yeah, but I, I don't understand. give a and fuck. But look, when you are part of the best in the fucking world, undisputed, you better recognize. Everybody better recognize. But the best, as you said, started falling down. And my question here is, how did you tell with, with guys like John saying, I'm living to this newer project? Or when Shima... The whole story with Shima, was you, were you part of it when uh, Shima, Shima left? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, but, but again, these are, these are very difficult and complex things. Yeah, but then you got a better offer and then you had to just... I mean, you bottom line is... You, you, you couldn't can, counter offer? Or no, 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 no. It, it wasn't really anything like that. I mean, John Julio, when he wanted to do his things, there was no one more supportive than me. Fuck yeah, go and do your thing. As a matter of fact, you can ask John. When he asked me uh, way back in the day about whatever it was, you know, I said, do whatever your fucking heart tells you, you know, do what is fucking best for you. If you don't feel like you can develop, evolve, 
you're not getting your fucking dues or whatnot. Yes. And I mean, that goes back to me personally as well. I'm telling you, in all the years I worked for fucking Power Slide, right? I could have made double, triple, or more in those years. I didn't care because I was doing something I loved. So was there times when I went to Power Slide, I was like, hey, man, I should be getting more money? And fuck yeah, there was times I went and was like, hey, man, what the fuck? All right? I sold a million dollars plus worth of shit here. I should be, right? But at that time, I look at the big picture. You know, the skaters got what they got. I got what I got. The guy working in the warehouse got what he got. Because that's what you motherfucking agreed to. Okay, just like you said, you see, once you sign so, the agreement, then... So, uh, but did Power Slide pay for my travel costs and skaters travel costs and, and this, that, and the other? Absolutely, 100%. So I have no regrets, yeah. you know. Uh, and besides, I made the decision to, to continue along that path or whatever. But my point is because you asked, um, you, you mentioned Shima. I mean, uh, at the time, you know, you got to remember who... who uh, who the, this group is, you know, John, uh, John Elliott and Brian Shima and uh, th this rat tail group or whatever, you know, they wanted to do their own thing. Fuck yeah, do your own thing. Some were successful, more successful, less successful, whatever. But bottom line is, if you're going to, if that's your passion, I'm your number one supporter. So... It wasn't a question of like, could you have offered them more or something like that? I mean, um, I don't think that was like the direction that, that, that we were going, right? Um, and then I, I'll mention something else that um, basically was another part of my claim to fame, if you want to call it claim to fame, is that at a certain point, and some like this more than others, I had this big plan that I wanted to have not only the most amazing USD skate team, pros and AMs, but I also wanted the most amazing flow teams in the world, which I fucking accomplished. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you had your USD Korea team, you had your USD fucking, you know, Poland team or, you know, the, you know African, whatever. And... What I did was I empowered them through my means, which is material, right? Skates, accessories, whatever the fuck I could get, whatever I could get my hands on, right? Um, and uh, so that those countries, you might remember that uh, picture uh, with me holding the world it says battle my country. Oh, I didn't remember that. I don't Okay, that, that came from... Uh, a video that was going to be um, uh, all the flow teams. Uh, it was called Battle My Country. Okay. Um, and w was within USD w teams? Yes, yes. It, which was strictly uh, USD teams, um, which were flow teams. Yes. I wanted to have... Like a uh, bit of a Battle My Crew? Like a Battle My battle Crew? Battle My Crew, Battle My Crew. Within yeah. like only USD yeah. skaters, yeah. Um, so imagine that uh, some of the names that are big today came from some of those flow teams, right? Uh, Russia, USD Russia team, or yes. whoever they were. Zaitsev, right? Andrei Zaitsev, uh, Evgeny Leonov. I, I, when I first met yeah. Evgeny, I was like, I knew about this guy, but I didn't know nice. how good he was because to start with, he had the language barrier where you were extremely important on that because somehow you were in contact with their team managers nationally and you would be yeah. able to work their images, but the image, but at the end of the day, when I first met that guy, I was like, wow, this isn't real. And at the time, I was traveling a bit. But we'll get to my part, well, of my yeah. connection with you in so, a second. So my point was this, is that I had an understanding with uh, distributors and any, anybody involved in selling uh, USD or power slide, for that matter, stuff. It's like, I want you to fucking sponsor the best... Now, remember, what, what, what is the best? What is my vision of yes. what the best is? I know. It's not fucking ability alone, right? It has to do with personality, fucking lifestyle, 
ability, style, all these things. Like, so everything that Dustin Latimer encompasses. Like, you even said, like, back in the day, like, Dustin, I, I'll tell you a story about Dustin, like, that I'll never forget. We're in Bercy, Dustin wins the Bercy contest, which is a big fucking deal. I mean, it should be. I mean, to me, it was a big fucking deal, right? He gets his trophy, which is an Eiffel Tower, and it says Bercy winner, like that. And uh, basically, he kind of just threw it to the way he wasn't really interested. Yeah, it's not, that's that's not, not why I'm here. That's yeah. not, you know, I took that and kept it, you know, because you know, I didn't want it just to be thrown away. And later, uh, I think when he got his uh, uh, legend status or whatever it was at, at some ceremony in, in California for... Uh, uh, Hall of Fame or whatever it was, I, I sent it to there so that he could get it back. But um, that's my point. Dustin Latimer is Dustin Latimer, period. What makes Dustin Latimer amazing? Dustin Latimer is amazing because he is himself amazing. Yes. He's not worried about what other fucking people are doing. He's doing his own thing. He has his own fucking style. He doesn't care. I mean, he, 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 you're doing great shit. That's cool. That's awesome. But I'm doing my thing. It doesn't right? gonna it's not going to influence me. Yeah. The sad part is, is that, you know, people might want to jump on that fucking train, right? And then it's yes. like, oh, yeah. copy style or whatever. The case. My point is this. If you look at all of the history of USD skaters during this time frame, each and every single one of them was their own personality. Exactly. And they had their own style, and they had their own way about them. And uh, like anyone in, in FP, and again, they're all connected, right? So your Vinnie Mintons and your Feinbergs and just, you name your Sagonas and just whoever it is. These are personalities. You got to let them do what they do, right? And then you just try to slap a little bit of structure on it so that shit can function properly, right? Of course. But, but let them do what they want to do. I wanted that same thing in all those flow countries. You understand? So if you lived in fucking Korea, you know that the USD Korea team is fucking madman. Yeah. If you were in fucking uh, Sweden, right? You know those USD Sweden dudes, they're the fucking best. Yeah. And that was my vision for, and for a time period it was that way, right? Um, and uh, so answering your question, uh, and I don't know why, if you know if you want to move forward in that, no, no, but good. bottom line is, is that at some point that got lost. That why do you think that got mentality lost? got lost? I think it got lost because there's too many fucking opinions out there. And you can, you're more than fucking welcome to your opinion. But are you sponsored by fucking USD or no? Bottom line, right? Yeah. Are you part of this fucking stretch crew or not? You understand that? that I understand. Uh, maybe I have a simple mindset. No, no, I understand where you're going with it. Right? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're like, oh, you know, especially today, we talked about the wokeness and the, you know, this, that, and the other. And careful what you say, you know, because you might get stamped, uh, you know, stamp that or this and that and the other, bro. At this time, you're either fucking down or you're not down. It's that simple. You're either down with the crew or you're not down with the crew. So in simple terms, right? Now, would that function today? Probably not. But at this time, that was my mindset. I want these guys to be the best they can be. I want them to be themselves. I want them to have fun. I want to, them to enjoy the ride as long as they want to enjoy the ride until they're ready to move on and do their own things. You want to go on and, and do uh, Shima skates, and you want to go on and do, uh, you know, fucking Dinah or uh, you, Follow and Diamond. You, whatever you want to do, you know, out fucking standing. But remember, even Arlo went on to do great things. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, uh, I'm an owner of the fucking drug receipts NFT, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so I still follow these guys. I, I love Arlo to death, always have. But um, my point is, you know, Arlo, he went on to do his own things. He's an amazing artist, right? So it's not like, but he was a member of motherfucking USD. 
Yes, it is. From day one, I remember. He's part of the fucking legacy. And I want to make sure that in motherfucking 2023, some dude who picks up a pair of USD skates understands Arlo Eisenberg used to be a fucking part of the shit, helped start this shit, was a main factor in this shit. Yeah. Right? That's... That's all like, you know, uh, people get angry with me about that shit. Oh, that's in the past, you know, fuck that, who get, no bro. That's the whole fucking point. It wouldn't be to where it is today and where it was 10 years ago or whatnot without these amazing fucking fantastic people. I agree with it. I need, I think some people some companies really deserve the respect. And now with that, can you imagine after with what Holly said and with someone who's, this is what I've been doing since I was two years old. I never stopped skating. Can you imagine for someone from a small town, how many people do we have living in this town? I don't know, probably 20,000. Okay, so can Somewhere. you imagine from someone, and this is a small town, right? Yeah. Someone from a town with half the people that you have here. My town in Portugal has 10,000 people living. In Portugal, I may have been, I don't want to sound like rude or anything, but I may have been a big shit within the Portugal thing, but I was just a Portuguese guy. We, we had our own competitions. We never really had like a professional skater or anything like that. I went and studied sports because my parents made me understand. I didn't want to study. I didn't want anything to do with that. My parents were like, well, if you really want to skate, if you really love it so much, try to, do, try to go to at least a university to study something that might give you a little bit of future related to what you really love. Only reason why I went through skating. Only reason why I moved to Hungary for a couple of years or two years. And I remember being at the university in Hungary. I go to the library. After uh, a weekend where I was in Zagreb for a, a skate event, my, I, I just came out from, a surgery, from a, uh, an injury in my foot. And that weekend I did like, it was my first time meeting personally someone that was a sponsor of mine, Leo Donhauser from mm -hmm. Ignition Skate Shop. Fuck yeah. We were, no we were, he was supporting me from a long time out of just, I used to be the Portuguese guy that made the orders and then everyone in Portugal wanted to make orders, they would put it together with me. So he started supporting me without even knowing my level of skating or anything. Yeah. I, I live in Hungary, I go to Zagreb for an event and you find out about my skating, how good or not I was. It happened that the same weekend was, or the same Friday or Monday or whatever, the Daily Bread came out. I'm Monday. On Monday, I get to Hungary, I open my email and I got an email from a guy called Mark Corti. Like, what the fuck? I know Mark Corti. Why do I get an email from Mark Corti? <laughs> I get an email that is offering me to skate for the company that has the skates, which I love the most. At the time, I was skating Rams. I was skating Rams because Kato started sending me skates. I would be not even on float, just someone who got skates. Yeah. But I got an email from a, a company called USD, obviously Mark Corti offering me to start paying me, to possibly give me a pro skate, with, which was the Greiken, to welcome to the Europe, welcoming to the possibility of integrating the European pro team. For me, it's like, it, I told you last night, I had to go and tell you that because I never really got to tell you. We yeah. were supposed to go on tours, I, I got broke before those tours, some of the tours never happened, like Russia. I never got to tell you this, but you completely changed my life with that. You changed my life one year or two before when throughout IMYTA in Paris, I was once again, even before this, I was just a small kid that no one knew. I was just like this Portuguese guy. Randomly, I emailed the guys from IMYTA because like, there's a competition, I'm going to Paris. People in Portugal respect me. No one else in the world know me, but I'm going to send an email and I'm going to say I want to compete. And Mike Wilson, said, just come over, come around, we'll see if you can enter. I go to you, you have no idea who I am, no one knows, and you're like, okay, just, you, I don't know if you saw me skating or whatever happened there, or if you saw me falling on my head a couple hours before at the beginning. I was at 8 a.m. falling on my head at La Defense, and you allow me to compete on that event. I ended up putting Shaz Sands out and Ben White, and the whole thing happened 
once again, you were there. You, you were the one signing my name into that IMYTA. So twice, without even knowing, and I had to go to you and tell you that. Can you imagine to how many people you've done this? Because at the end of the day, you may have not been a skater. You may have came into it because of the sales, or you may have tried to work within a brand, but there was a lot of people that may have not even been related to USD, which you completely changed their lives. I mean, it basically comes down to this. I took my job very fucking seriously, okay? Um, a lot of people don't understand or realize that I answered every fucking USD email yes. myself. So if you ever wrote an email to USD... There was no assistance, there was no nothing. Was at you. info at usdskate.com, it came directly to fucking me, and I answered you. I may have answered you uh, positively, or maybe uh, not negatively, but said, hey, sorry. Just not what answer you wanted, yeah. But, but beyond that is, for a period of fucking 10 years, my life revolved around USD and skating. And this... Just in general, like you say, I am YTA and, and John and Zeke. I mean, uh, you know, I love these guys. These guys are my fucking heroes. Um, it, it's so strange when I think back on it because um, uh, it, it's like you're a part of it, but you're outside. Uh, you, you, you're yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But you're a part of this big fucking thing. Not consciously knowing you're a big part of this fucking thing, but you get to hang out with fucking yeah, John with the, Julio with the best and, of and Zeke time, yeah. and, and the best people, and and, and, and you know them. To, the, to when I think about Josh Petty, I don't think about oh my god, Josh Petty, you know, like that. I think this is, you know Josh, this is, you know, this is the, yeah, he's amazing, but he's also a fucking great guy. And and and, and uh, so when you say I am YTA, well, I kind of injected myself into the IMYTA simply because I wanted to help. I, you know, I was like, hey, I'll, you know, like that. And then when you see the pictures or uh, sometimes I had a megaphone, Zeke had the me megaphone yeah. most of the time and I'm the guy holding the fucking clipboard in Europe or whatever. It's just because I wanted to help and I wanted to help help him move it along because well, you it, ain't easy, it, ain't, <laughs> it, it ain't easy to fucking run that shit. John Julio ran that shit and it's not easy, but it is help, you know, if you got someone who is... Compassionate knows all the skaters in Europe, right? I know all the skaters yeah. in Europe. And what people don't understand behind the scenes is, is that I have my fucking ears everywhere. I know of Ricardo Lino because of this. I know of Evgeny Leonov because of this. I know fucking Stefan Orman because of this. I know, you understand what I'm saying? And I'm looking for talent. I'm looking for passion. I'm looking for dedication. I'm looking for people that are part of or can be part of the legacy or the continued legacy. We want people to come in who have the same level of fucking passion yes. of being part of the stretch crew than the core group. Yeah. So um, this takes, uh, this isn't just some random shit, you know, I'm like, hey, Ricardo, you want to do this? No, man, I know who the fuck you are. I've been following what's going on, right? Um, and uh, I want to see you succeed. See, here's the beauty. You and several like you ended up working for Power Slide. It's true. Ended up promoting things, ended up marketing things, ended up getting their own brands into power slide, ended up uh, making their own companies, ended up making their own video series, ended up, you understand? But there were for sure some that turned against you along the way. I mean, turned against me? I mean, how the fuck are you gonna turn against me? So, I mean, I'm me, you, you're, you're fucking you, right? So I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I, I do, but the question here is, why did you left power slide at the first time then? So the first time, um, you know, it was basically, I, I um, long story short, I was like, you know, I'm getting older. I need to make the, the cash monies, you know yes. what I'm saying? And I'm not the only one. A lot of skaters, too, you know, were at that point where it was like, you know. It's um, time. It's time. So I got an offer to go into the golf industry, and I worked in the golf industry. Oh, I didn't know that. For eight years, and uh, I made lots of money, or I should say much more money. Okay. 
And uh, I loved golf because I went, uh, I started playing golf and I liked it. And I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll just take my sales skills to golf. Okay. And I did that. And, and, and it was fine. And maybe it was the right time. Maybe it was the right time. Maybe it was the time when I started to feel like the train maybe was going a little bit off the tracks. For, in my opinion. Well, for what you wanted, for your, in, in what you envisioned envision with skating. And maybe, maybe I was like, okay. Maybe give someone else a, a go. Okay. Maybe, maybe give someone, <laughs> hey, maybe give someone else a go. Maybe they can do this shit better. But, like, it, but a couple it. of years later, you ended up like, well, this is way, going way too much out the train tracks. So why did you go back in, in 2000? I was like, look, I show up at, uh, I, at, uh, at the Winter Clash 2010. It was the best surprise I got. I look, I go there just to visit Matthias. At the time, I was a little bit off skating because I, I just finished my graduation. I was still skating, of course, but... I, I got some scan, skates sent to me. Out of nowhere, I got another email from Powerslide. I don't know if it were you or not, but some carbon skates were sent to me. Maybe you, maybe not. I don't know. I got some skates sent to me. So I go there just to say hello to Matthias. I haven't seen him in a bit. I was out of Powerslide for two years at this time. When I see you, it was like I was so happy for that. I was like, wow, he's back. I mean, the bottom line is Matthias asked me to come back. I'm straight up, you know. Um, um, And I was like, yeah, man, I mean, we talked about it because you got to remember, like, I've been in Power Slide, even though if I might not have been there um, yes. during a certain time frame, I was still there somehow, some way, right? Uh, I was uh, the uh, UK sales manager for a while, even though I had left Power Slide. Oh, I, I didn't know that. The US, uh, uh, or, or I was going, I, I got sick, basically, and I lost 80 centimeters of large intestine. During a time frame, I had a relapse, but I was going to open the you know, U.S. distributorship okay. uh, at one time. So, like, where year was that? I have no idea. Like, uh, this is probably like 2011 ish, maybe. Or something. Was that after Scott in the U.S.? Oh, it was way after Scott. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah, way after Scott. Yeah, no, Scott, Scott Walker, um, you know, Big Dan. Yeah. Uh, Awesome legacy, right? I mean, Big Dan, let's be honest. Uh, and again, it, it, we're, we're moving in and out of, of yes. things, but bottom line is without Big Dan, you're not going to have, you're not going to, yeah, without Big Dan, you're not going to have a lot of these brands that you know and love, and you're not going to have uh, aggressive skating at the level that it became in the U.S. Yes. Right? Um, at the end of the day, the skaters are being paid, but someone needs to bring the skates in order to monetize what they're doing. So they're like marketing a product, but if the product, this is something that a lot of people don't understand. If the distribution is not strong in a country, as good as the skaters can be in that country, as good as the marketing contents that they produce can be amazing, as, as good as the contents are, if there's not a, a distribution monetizing it, it's not profitable for the company. So that's, that has more yeah. to do with business, but it's a lot of times hard. Nowadays, it's different because the world is more open. So it's... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so hard to talk about it sometimes because I have so much freaking knowledge and history in there. <laughs> I mean, of course, what, what, would US, uh, what would Aggressive be without uh, Paradise or, or uh, Aggressive Mall or Ignition Skate or... Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but when we take it all the way back, Scott Walker and Big Dan was a huge huge part of that and and jess and law and all these guys that, that took these brands and sort of kind of put it together and again some of these skaters skated for different brands you know um, and they put it all together but but if if you're asking me um why did i come back i came back because matthias asked me to come back and, and we agreed and like i said uh, you know uh to this day i can walk into power slide and and, and give matthias a big fat hug whether he fucking likes it or not We'll make it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> because that's, the, you know, that this, this is his family and shit, you know? And I'm fucking loyal to this day uh, with USD, right? Uh, um, and uh, believe it or not, I did have offers from other skate companies. And? Never. And it, it, it was out of the question for me. I mean, uh, it's going to sound really fucking arrogant, but I don't give a fuck. But it's like... Just imagine if you're uh, Real Madrid mm -hmm. 
and you get asked by another club that isn't fucking Barcelona, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. to, to come and, and, and be for them. That's how I felt at the time. Anything other than USD is a downgrade. <laughs> so okay. why would I want a downgrade, right? Okay. I don't but, give a but for some people, like example, Chima would be one of them. When he left, he saw it as a challenge. He saw that moving to Razors as a challenge. Let me see if... What I, what I am can actually help this company. So there's different ways of seeing it. At the end no, of the absolutely. But again, I remind you that, you know, he uh, made Shima, right? Shima Skate. And, uh, yeah, that was the later stage. And, that was and, part of the process. And, but, but these are manufactured, in essence, by razors, right? So, you know, same manufacturers or same family, I'll put it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because um, Andy is also like a family of razors and companies, right? And, USD and companies, but remember, this is power side family. So, my point is, is that whatever group you belong to, right? So, maybe even you know the first uh, skates that uh, Julio did were from the Roches family, right? More or less, you understand? The the first ones with the, with them? No, no, not before them. Fucking oh, uh, with Valo. With no. the, the, the whole follow was uh, was a so, righteous company. So you understand the, the the thing, but I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him. Quite what? the opposite. Well, I think course. it's I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome because they're like to fucking do C. I got to do fucking A and B first. Was Roach is the company that approached you to work for them? I, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> oh, no, it was mo- it was more than one. It was more okay. than one. Okay. Because you got to remember at a certain time. Uh, these companies were saying, like, why the fuck are these guys fucking so popular? You know, what the, what the fuck? And then you got, I'm at every event out there fucking, you know, <laughs> I'm the man. Big Mark. My team is the <laughs> fucking best in the world. Fuck you, you know, whatever. We are how we are, you know. Um, don't give a fuck, you know. So it, it's just a, at a certain point, companies are like, you know, maybe this is the, the spark. You know, maybe this is the thing that... Uh, uh, you know, the difference, the difference maker, right? Um, me, I was all about stretch crew, unapologetic. Uh, we are undisputed the best. We have each other's backs. These dudes are in FP. We got the, the baddest ass videos. <laughs> we got Joe Navran, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got all these people that are in our corner and stuff, we, we can't be touched. So what you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? It, it, th- that's my mentality. Yes, I time, Right? So when I got approached by other companies, I was like, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting and everything, but you know, it's not, it's not, it's not USD. That's not what you want. You know, I, I, I wear the fucking tattoo. So I, I know mean, that. You know, what the fuck, you know? But, but anyway, yeah, this is just to answer your questions. I mean. Um, um, so let's bring it to today. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Let's bring it to today. Okay. How do you see two things? Number one, USD nowadays, do you think it lacks leadership? That's question number one. And question number two, how do you see the rest of the skating industry? Who do you think it's making it right? So this is where we get like, probably controversial because to be fair, I don't follow it as, as much as I used to. Okay. Um, I, I do know some things and I do follow some shit. But um, when I look at USD as a team, are all these dudes fucking talented? Yeah, they're talented. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing Have skaters. I seen their skating? Fuck yeah. Some Amazing of that skating skaters. is, is mm-hmm. pretty fucking good. No question. But hit me with, just, just out of the blue, okay? I'm going to ask you right now. Hit me with one of the best USD skaters right now. Hit me with a name. Nick Lomax or Eugen Annen. Okay. Chris Farmer. Okay. Well, some of the newer names. The newer ones? I mean, Chris Farmer, everybody knows. Chris Farmer is uh, fucking amazing. I would say Carlos Bernal. Nick Lomax, even though him and I really never Sam got along. Sam Crofts, Carlos Bernal. Okay. So Bernal, like Bernal. He's amazing. But he yeah, is amazing. I, get, I understand what you he's mean. Amazing. Like he's being he's in amazing. Spain. Yes. Yeah, he's amazing. amazing. He's amazing, but yeah, am, Mary Munoz. Am I gonna? Am I? Let's be honest. Am I gonna sell fucking 
five, ten thousand Bernal skates? You tell me. I understand what you mean. Are you going to fucking sell five or ten thousand Bernal skates? Yes or no? I can tell you why. It could work, but not maybe five or ten thousand because the market is not big enough. But I understand what you mean. But what I was going to tell you is like, imagine the Spanish market is probably one of the biggest ones in Europe, especially for aggressive Trust skating. Me, I know. Yeah. And by having, an, by having like, Someone which is so respected in Spain, so good. But maybe would be, I would see it, as, as you say, would be extremely hard to sell maybe a Carlos Bernal skate in France, which is right next to it, or maybe even in, in Russia. Russia or Bro, you're asking me and I'm giving you a fucking honest answer. But I, but I, but I respect My that. My honest answer is, yeah, man, I could sponsor fucking God and everybody. Yeah. If I want. Yeah. No fucking problem. So. I did for many years, yeah. but there's a difference. There's a difference. Do you think the team is too big? The fucking team's way too big. Okay. The pro team is too big? It's my fucking opinion. I get it, but... No, no, it, no, but it's, it's my opinion. I mean, look, you know the German saying, right? Wenig is oft mir. No, I don't know that. The German saying, wenig is oft mir. Okay, less is less more. Less is often more. Yes, okay. Now, if you take it all the way back to the fucking glory days, okay. that right there says it all. Less is often more. Okay. The team never wanted to be bigger. What it was, was a combination of, like, we as a fucking team are down for Shima. Mark. We as a team are down for Gillen. Me, we as a team fucking are telling you right now that we want Dominic Sagana to be fucking am. But that's why my question... We want Richard on the fucking team. This is a different motivation. Do you understand me? I fully understand that. I fully understand this that. This is a fucking different motivation. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. But I don't... I'm nobody. Who gives a fuck what but that's the, the, the thing here is, my question was a bit different. My question was, do you think the team lacks leadership? Because at the end of the day, look at... Your, your role was not just... There were some skaters that you took them from here and you got them with you. Example, I, I think it was with you, but Dominic, um, Demetrius. Demetrius first got in with, with Richard. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he grew within the company, or even Richard. Richard was just a kid that got the USD skates, but he went to become like a big thing within USD. So at the end of the day... So you have to understand, let me, let me try to explain this. Okay? Yeah, please. Uh, from my point of view. Of course. Okay. Others' point of view is what it is. But I'm going to try to explain to you in a, in a way explainable through structure. Okay. Is how certain shit happened a certain way. Okay. You mentioned Richard Johnson. Okay. Richard Johnson is part of a core fucking group of guys. Yes. All right. That recognizes each other's stees. Just to boil it fucking down yes. to the easiest way to express it. Sagona, Demetrius George, fucking Abdil, uh, you name them. And if the team is down for these people, I'm down for these people. Yes. All right? That makes all, that, that, that's what the team is. And I'm Mark Cordy. Whoever the fuck that is, all right? And if I'm passionate ab enough about the shit, then I am going to go to Matthias and I am going to advocate for this. this, just like in any other fucking structure. Yes. Now, Matthias is his own fucking boss. He's the boss man. Yes. So if Matthias says, I want fucking... Uh, where Carlos Benal or whatever the fuck their names are to be this, then he's going to make that fucking decision. Yes. Back in the day, it was a group fucking decision. I was there. I was at the fucking meetings. You know the famous picture of all of us out in front in Cali and, and mm -hmm. it's the team or the whatever. black and white photo. And Matias, Matias and, and I are there or whatever. It's a very uh, rare picture actually. Um, where Matthias is actually in the photo, right? Because Matthias is the fucking boss. Everybody knows Matthias is boss, right? But I'm there and the, and the whole team's there. And then I think uh, Dustin's upside down and we're holding his legs. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever seen the picture. Um, that was one of those times when we had a fucking team meeting about 
who was going to be the next skater, who was going to get the next skate, or just whatever the fucking thing it was. You understand? This is a this is a team decision. Some team decisions were better than others, and some team decisions uh, came about in different ways, right? Yes. But that was one of the rare times when it was literally everyone was there. Um, I think it was even for the IMYTA. Um, San Francisco. XK. No, no, not San Francisco. The yeah. IMYTA. LA. Um, LA. I, I don't remember. 2002, the LA one. It's been a long time. Uh, but uh, we were all together. And, uh, you know, the skaters fucking <laughs> expressed their opinion. You know, I mean, we did shit in different ways at different times. I remember I fucking went to the trouble to print out a fucking paper with questions. And I still have that shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> I still have that shit. I still have where fucking Kevin Gillen wrote, you know, yeah, I think this should be like this because of this. I This sucks because of that, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Kevin Gillen, right? Uh, because I did shit like that. Because even though it's not necessarily a, uh, you know, a fucking democracy, mm-hmm. it's really a Cause dictatorship. Because there's, the, there's a boss, of course. Matias is the fucking boss. Yeah. But you got to understand is that we, we made it work. We made it work and, uh, and it was a group decision. So, and I fucking stand by my comments that you just asked me. And I just gave you the, the answer about the team today yes. and any fucking team that you mentioned today. And I will tell you. So who's doing it right now? The core... Right? Has to be, first of all, that you're selected because it has to be a big fucking deal. Yes. Do you, th- you tell me, when Kevin Gillen and Brian Shima were announced as the next USD fucking skaters, was that a big deal? Of course it was. Was that a fucking big deal? Of course it was a big deal. Damn thing. fucking Skippy. That was a damn, like, holy fuck. Damn. Same with Aaron Feinberg later. Holy shit. When Aaron Feinberg became a part of USD. He left Solomon. <laughs> that was fucking madman. Yes, exactly. That's nuts. That's crazy. Are you shitting me? So, do you see the passion? I understand exactly. Do you see what goes through? The industry and... But don't uh, you think that it's happening nowadays with any brands? I mean, I, to be fair, I don't fucking know. I see. I see. But I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> that was a secret. <laughs> if, if it doesn't have the same impact, okay? And I mean, I'm outside looking in, all right? Nobody yeah. gives up. Cordy, it's fucking old news, all right? You, you asked me for the interview. I'm giving you... I love it. I'm giving you... I'm happy with it. I'm I, giving you honesty. That's why I wanted it. But let me, let me just put it in perspective for you, all right? So I, I know... I, I, I've seen the videos. I, I know the USD team. I know all the members. And, mm-hmm. and like I said, they're talented and it's fucking good shit. But let me ask you a fucking just a straight up question, all right? And you, you tell me. Yes. You got all these guys, and then you got fucking Chris Farmer. Yes. It comes from I, are you a, it, fucking shitting it me? Com- it comes from a different era. I fully understand what you mean. I, I fully understand. So Chris Farmer used to have like the God status at a certain time, and he, he kept his God status, basically. And oh. it's... You got all these guys, and then you got Chris Farmer. Are you fucking shitting me, man? This dude is fucking next level. You understand? He rode for the fucking mind game. I, I can't. He, yeah, I, he, I agree he fucking, with it. He he was part of the shadow in the in the fucking all these things. Exactly. I fully understand what you mean. I he was. Part I of don't the, need to agree with everything, which yeah, is normal, yeah, no, of no. course. I, I, Example, like it, I, I can look I, at Richie and I can say that Richie Eisler, this dude is, you know, it's been. He, it, well, let me let me put it in perspective for the for Richie Eisler's. Yeah. Uh, of the world, okay? I, me, personally, I put you and Richie Eisler in the same category, okay? I'll tell you why. Because this is the, the end of my era, right? Yes. But this is the, the up-and-coming, yes. uh, the, the talent, the, the next generation, mm-hmm. if you want. Yes. The next generation of skaters that should have, that should have 
molded the future of the company. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Two and Clear Farmer and, and, and really all these guys. Uh, but my point is this. At some point, you have to be fucking selective. That's point one. That's point one. Three hundred percent. You make people sad and mad with that. that that's point one. I don't give a fuck. No, 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 no. I'm saying like as skaters, sometimes they need to listen to a no. You it's gotta harsh. be yes. fucking selective. Yes. That's number one. Number two, skating ability is not the fucking standard. Mm. I... Personality, passion. Fucking ability, yes. talent, that is the fucking standard. At some point, I'm, you have to, I don't normally talk about skateboarding and yeah. aggressive skating in the, in the same breath. But at some point, you have to fucking take a step back and ask, what is your end state? What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to accomplish skate sales? Do you want to accomplish a fucking legacy? Do you want to accomplish an atmosphere where we can support what we've built? What is the end state? I don't know the fucking end state. I don't own the company. Yes. All the people that own the other companies and, and Matthias owns Power Slide and all these other companies and Rollerblade and where are they? They know the fucking end state. I don't know the end state. It's not my business. I'm a fucking United States Army soldier. So, you know, where the fuck, right? <laughs> you dropped the seed, you left, and now you dropped the bomb. <laughs> okay, so my point is this. If that's what you want to fucking accomplish, well done. Good to go. Keep driving on. But you're asking me and I'm giving you my opinion. I don't want that type of team. I want the most undisputed fucking team in the world where each individual can hold that team on his fucking own. Is there any team like that right now for in, you? In my opinion, what team? Where the fuck are you going to find these people? I don't know. Like, example, when Damskate started, when Damskate started... I mean, to be fair, them is probably the closest. No, but but there's a reason behind but it. But let me tell you one thing. Like, when Damskate started... The first skaters that they were announcing, they didn't want to announce like the biggest names. So Alex Brosco actually was announced a couple months later, a couple weeks later. So he started Alex by... Alex Brosco, he's OG. In yes, it. but he, he, he started like when the company started, there were three names that a lot of people may have not even knew, knew about. And, and that's like, fair, but you got to understand that, that who's but, the boss? It's well, John, of, the course, of course. So if this is his fucking vision... Exactly, but I'm not, I'm not going against any of them. Yeah. Amazing. The way that it, they've yeah. been doing their, the whole marketing, the way that he's been running his brand. Now, Billy O'Neill with Mesmer, his first skater being announced was John Bolino, which is like, he made a comeback. He was the skater of the year or the, well, the you comeback gotta of the year. Well, you got to remember that some of these people are coming from uh, past crews and, uh, you know, they're friends. They're, they're, they're fucking... Of course, they're, all they're of brothers. them. They're brothers. They're brothers. Yeah. But, and I'm not going to speak, you know, badly one way or another. All I'm going to say is this, is that if you, this is your vision, I'll, I'll talk about them, okay? If this is your vision and uh, this is uh, because there's a reason why it's so successful. Because people relate to the fucking vision. Otherwise, they can buy another skate, maybe even for cheaper. I don't know. Yeah. So the thing that really, really, really pushed USD forward was a combination of team mentality, image. And don't forget, Matthias' A leadership that was able to back it up too. His innovation. Mm -hmm. And getting the team on board. So just to take it back, because you asked my role, you know, it's not easy just to slap my role on the table and be like, yeah, it was this. But <laughs> I know this if, kidding. <laughs> if you know about the manufacturing aspects and the sales aspects and the distribution aspects, and then you also know the team aspects and what the fucking team wants and, and this and everybody fucking like that. And when Matthias says, Look, 
you got to let the team know that it needs to go this fucking way for this fucking reason. I'm the enforcer in that direction. Yes. And when the team says, well, you can fucking tell Matias that shit need to go this way because of that, because this and that, then I'm the enforcer in the other fucking direction. Bottom line is we got to find a middle ground to make shit fucking work. It needs to come from your head. Sometimes it's not easy. But right. that's also the job of the team manager, which we like nowadays. That's the fucking job of the team manager. So I, to me, I mean, you're asking me, I don't even think there are any fucking team managers anymore. There are two. There's, two, there's three, actually, three companies Ooh. that have team manager. So Martina, which is the, someone probably like you that didn't come from a skating background. It's from no, 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 no. Oh. Martina, she's an Italian oh, okay. girl, woman, who does... Roshi's? Roaches. She does the management for, for Roaches. Many years? No. Oh, okay. Once, once John and Valo split and John started them, she started doing the management. Okay. And then you got John, which is obviously still a skater, so I don't know if I can put him on the you, same you, realm. You, yeah, John, John's not but a then team manager. There's, John is fucking them. But the real team manager that I see right now, it's Tom Heiser with Rollerblade. Yeah, Tom Heiser's Comes always from a different... been a, a, a team manager, but again... Uh, we're moving into uh, unfamiliar ground for me because yeah. this is a corporation. Yes. Okay. A lot of people think... People oh. can say Power Slide is a corporation, right. but yeah, trust me, <laughs> I was there when Power Slide was fucking maybe 10 people. I don't know. Yeah, okay. you're building skates in the, <laughs> in the warehouse. I mean, when you have to get fucking skate tools, you know, until 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the fucking morning, putting together... Fucking John Julio and Champion Bound Stimulator and Arlo Skates. Your fucking hands are blistered and shit. Trust me, that's not a corporation. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I should consider Billy O'Neill as a team manager or if he's still a pro skater for the brand, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have a pro skate. He wants to mainly manage the brand. So I don't know if Billy would be. But I would say the only team manager which would be in the same uh, category where you are in the same type of... Yeah. Well, look, it does the product, it yeah. does the sales, it does the, the marketing, he runs the team, he helps you to... Well, the, the, thing about, the thing about me, I, would, I just want to make clear, is like, um, I'm nobody special. You understand? I got to get my fucking hands 32. I got to do the fucking work, I got to make the sales. I don't make the fucking sales, I got to answer for that. Yeah. I don't run the team right, I got to answer for that shit. You understand? Uh, and I'm up for the motherfucking challenge. Yeah. You understand? So, uh, I got to stand tall for the fucking decisions I make, one way or another. And I'm down for that shit. That's the type of person you got to have. Now, I'm not just saying I'm the fucking standard because it was a different time and, and whatever, but I will say this. I stand by it. I would still stand by it today. And if you put me in charge of a fucking team, I would run that fucking team the way I think that team needs to be fucking ran. You're going exactly the same way where I wanted to go now. So let's, let's get this. Like, I know that you have very few time. I would want to continue this because there's a lot of more in-depth things, a lot of histories about this. I don't know tools. that many people no, no, would be interested. No, there's a lot. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up this with one question because I know that you don't have a lot of time. But I want to end up this with one question. To start with, I, I was just telling you, I would love to do a part two of these because sure. I know there's a lot of things like a lot of tour stories like the South African one you just told me. We will keep that for another day. But sure, I sure. want to finish this with one question. If Matthias asked you yeah. if you would be the team manager again, because I'm going to be fully honest, I, th I really think that USD lacks a team manager nowadays. Yeah. But this is me on the outside and it's probably most other skaters do not agree. I love them most. I love most of them. I'm friends with most of them. But at the end of the day, I still think that it, it, it lacks that compared to what it used to be. Especially as someone who worked with you. I, I got an email. I got, no, I got a phone call. My first ever trip. It was the day that I met Jojo Jacobi. I was staying with the BMAC guys in Vienna and I, I got a phone call. I, I got an email, just please call this number. I called this number, and this guy is you, and he's like, where are you? You cannot go here without telling me where you go because I need to send you product. And that was when the, the suspension frame came out, and you were mad at me because I didn't told you where I was going. You wanted to send me the frame, and that was one of my first interactions with you. And that, to me, made me feel important. As sad and mad I was at the moment, it made me feel important. So that's why I'm saying, I really think that 
a lot of the companies nowadays lack that. Yeah, because you got to give a fuck. So, if you, you get answered, you give, if you, 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 if you get the, if, if someone, which in this case, because you said you're loyal, you have the USA test. If Matthias asked you to be the team manager, would you be the team manager again? I mean, quite honestly, I don't think it's possible uh, simply because uh, I'm working towards my military retirement. I am full, I'm a full-time soldier. I'm 24-7. Yeah. So uh, I've been active duty since five 20, years 20, five years from now. 2018. Uh, in five years from now, I'll be 60 fucking years old. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and quite honestly, maybe looking for a job, I don't know. Bottom line is, if, if the time comes, uh, if, then it would only be for USD, it would only be for Power Slide, it would only be for Matthias. I tell you, I want to make sure everybody on camera understands, I fucking love this guy to death. Uh, not only did he give a guy a chance back in the day, a fucking nutso dude. I mean, imagine this. Sometimes we laugh about what we have in the past. Yeah. I come into their fucking office, <laughs> like, you know. Stop looking for anyone else. Like, <laughs> like some dude off the fucking street comes in and tells you, hey man, quit looking forever the fuck. I am the dude, all right? I'm the guy. What qualifications do you have? I don't worry about that. I'm just fucking, I'm awesome. Wait, well, can you show, do you have any schooling? And it, no, no, not really. Just fuck, you know what I mean? And he's like, all right, fuck it. We'll give you a try. And then... Come in and start doing a little bit of admin work or whatever. In just a very short time, a week, maybe two weeks it was, I don't remember. I'm running... Aggressive. Aggressive. For <laughs> which along which with, was the biggest segment at the time. <laughs> so al along went. with other Power Slide products, hockey and, and, and I mean, just yeah, selling. But at, but at I'm the, a sales guy. Yes, but at the time for Power Slide, the first, the first owned brand was USD. Because, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, again, the, the history... They were, distribu they were distributors and all that yeah, stuff. But, but. but the bottom line is, so again, I want to make it clear, uh, without Matthias, none of this works. Without Matthias caring about skaters, none of this works. Without Matthias innovating the fucking industry, none of this works. Without... Again, and I'll just take a step back. During a certain time frame, without Mark Cordy, it doesn't fucking work. Because uh, at some point, someone told me, you're like the fucking glue that holds it together. So how it's going to work in 15 years from now? I mean, bottom line is, you know, here, there... It, we had this conversation a it, lot it, with it, other guys that skate for the brand. Once Matthias decided he doesn't want to do it, because Matthias is the person willing to take the risk. He's willing to... Yes. He made 10 today, he'll spend 11 tomorrow on development and a lot of the, the world. And this is one of the reasons why I respect him and love him so much. That's a right. lot of people will be like, yeah, but these guys are trying new things and a lot of them, sometimes 9 out of 10, they fail. So what? That was one... That I mean, works. we're just talking about fucking USD. I mean, imagine all the shit he's done for speed. And that's what it is. It's, it's, anything it's, in skating, any yeah. fucking fitness. For, I mean, the guy's fucking. A, he's, he's. But this is what he's I'm like saying. He's like a fucking. Uh, what do you call him? Uh, like a savant. Like he'll come up with. Some I don't know idea. that word. I don't know what that is. A sorry. savant. It's like a savant is like uh, uh, you know like uh, a special uh, person that has all the knowledge, and I don't know how to say it. But anyway, uh, Matthias is. Uh, uh, He's like an encyclopedia in fucking his head or whatever and comes up with this shit. And he's made from the trunk of his fucking car. I know. An amazing company. He's so so my point to you is, and I want to make this clear, is that would be the only reason that I would ever come back is because of him and uh, and 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 me recognizing uh, the awesome person that he is. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Good, bad, or indifferent. All right? Everyone has fucking opinions. Mm, right? Of course. And they're entitled to their opinions, right? But um, you have to understand the level of fucking steez this guy has. All right? Um, and um, so really, I mean, that's, you know, uh, all I want to say about that as far as uh, if I would ever come back. I mean, it, w it would only be because of him and it would only because... But, I mean, I'm not sure a fucking 60-year-old... I mean... That's why I'm asking. Trust me, I, I believe I could do it. 
I believe I could do it because uh, when I came back the second time, and I won't go in it too deep, it was just a matter of uh, a clash of mentalities. Okay. At the beginning or at the end? No, no the second time. When I no, when back. you left or when you got back? Uh, to... No, no. Well, when I got back, I just came into my old role and fucking my way or the highway, you know what I'm saying? I'm running shit the way I'm going to run shit. But then when I found out at this yeah, It was clashing point, because there were people that were not used to have someone with that type exactly, of mentality. Exactly. And who the fuck is this guy and whatever. Um, when, when it came to that, um, you know... It's a, it's a situation where I'm happy to take a step back for the greater good, right? Mm -hmm. So you think you can do it better? Than so far along, were you back? I was like back for like a year or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, I was uh, implementing things that I felt were essential. Like? Like the respect for... Uh, the, the giving the pros legend status or whatever the fuck you want to call them, all star which status, you, or which you have in skateboard. Yeah. Well, and I mean, even if you don't want to compare, they it. fucking deserve it, didn't they? Yeah. They fucking deserve it. A lot of people put the, the, their body down the line. Well, imagine you how much money you go up to a fucking skater, how much money did you spend on a certain fucking skate, even though you had to really work hard to get that money. But because you love that fucking skater. Just think back. Right? So how many kids do you think worked hard, big borrowed steel money to get a Julio skate? So many with times. juice. Yeah. Right? How many fucking big borrowed and steel to get a fucking Dustin Latimer in gray? I did that before even with the M12 because I, I like before that, like with the M12, before I would, yeah. just, I would associate M12 with Arlo and such a big fan of Arlo. So right. I wanted that M12 because I've seen that big piece of paper with Arlo doing a Royale with the M12, with the, with the low rider wheels. So I want that skate. And I remember the Arlo skate uh, color, right? Yes. Was when I came, we still had like sand, pl plenty, plenty on stock when, yeah. I, when I came to the company. But then we turned it into a Jeff. commodity. Like people really wanted it. Like they, they yeah. wanted that skate so badly. And then we did a couple of the runs or whatnot of that skate. But my point is this. Do you understand the passion behind that, right? Of course. So let me ask you the question. How many people do you think now just want a skate because that skater's name is on that skate? Probably to a much lesser degree. There is... Is my opinion. Very few, yeah. I would say... Much less. Over, over the past year, there were two skates that I was very happy to get. Okay. One of them being probably someone that I don't know if you're aware, but being Dominic Bruce. As a kid that I saw starting doing amazing things in Europe, the way that he does his thing being so core. He's one of my favorite skaters, period. But like as a kid that has been started at a very young age to going to winter clashes and going on tours with much grown, like people much older than him and yeah. always staying real to himself and being accepted on a company or being invited to be in a company like Mesmer and having a pro skate. Yeah. East pro skate is something that I really love, but probably not a lot of people would know so much. Of but you reminded me of something right now that, that actually uh, I, I want to touch on real quick. If you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Think about back in the day, you know, the Pat Lennons, the Shane Saviors, or just you, yeah. any name on the on the on the yes. fucking it's like you had so many companies, yes. right? That they were passionate about their teams. And uh, it was a big deal to be mm. to have a fucking clothing sponsor, to have a fucking wheel sponsor. And to have, uh, you know, all, all these things. But a boot was completely different. Right? So, fast forward to today. Is it the same? Not even close. You know what? You don't have a skater that's fucking, uh, right now, exclusively skating for fucking blood wheels. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like... Like, they, it's, not, it's not the same as far as, like, 
uh, some of those skaters that that had all these different companies they represented mm -hmm. right? from different groups or even like an ignition skate skater right so he might have skated for ignition right yes. the skate shop, the skate shop. Or Grindhouse, or mm -hmm. fucking Ignition, mm -hmm. or, or not Ignition, um, for fucking In Intuition. Intuition. And all these different ones, right? But they might have had a little support from them, and then they had a little support from them, and they got flows from them, and like that, right? And they sh were in the videos, right? And all the different, because, and everyone recognized, and then just remember back in the day when, like, you had a part in a video. Yeah. Even one fucking clip. Yes. It happened with me. With, on Imagine you had one fucking clip in a video. The video is a 30 minute thing with lots of clips with a lot of people, but you have one and it's all, oh, wow. I get it. I fully understand what you mean. Where is that today? Internet killed it. It's not necessarily only to internet. We killed it. Why? And why did we kill it? You tell me. Because everyone's amazing. And everyone gets a fucking trophy. Because That's why. I don't, th I don't see as many people getting trophies, but I fully understand what you mean. It's like at the end of the day, everyone's if, fucking amazing. No, no. It's the thing is, if you look at it as a as a pyramid, as like the base, the amount of skaters you had was much bigger. For you to get to the pro skate, or for you to get to the clip, you would be here. If it's like a triangle, you would be here for the pro clip, here for the wheel, here for the skate, the top of the pyramid. Nowadays, the pyramid still exists. And you had to work your fucking way up there. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So you still have that nowadays to get the skate, but the problem is that the pyramid is not like this anymore. The pyramid is, there's much less to choose from, making it from someone. Let me tell you a story. By someone that comes, sorry, by someone that comes from the same era as you, where you have a lot more skaters, it makes it look like it's not as hard, which is for sure, I need to agree with that. It may not look as hard when we have so much less to choose, but some of the guys we have nowadays, they, they are amazing and they would have been amazing back then. They just didn't have the same amount of people to compete with because probably they would be or even the better. Or the support. Oh yeah, for sure. Let me tell you a story about Josh Latona. Okay, you know Josh. Of course, him. negative guy. I love Josh. Negative guy. I get it. But he can do everything else without being negative. I know. Can do, can do everything else too. I know. There was a time when I was pushing for Josh Latona because at the time I felt that, yeah, negative guy, but he, 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 he has... He's unique. He fits to the image because he's something special and uh, worthy. Yes. To a point. Never happened. He, he made it uh, a, a flow here and uh, uh, yeah. for, for uh, Kaiser and, and, and whatever, uh, uh, undercover, just whatever Did it was. he even have the wheel? He didn't uh, I, I don't remember, but the bottom line is this. He wasn't supported by the others. The team, yeah. Everyone said, oh, he, he's great, he's good. He's amazing, you know, it's good stuff. But, but not good enough or not, not good enough, no, but they wouldn't relate. That this was is a, the missing factor. Yes. And I want to make sure it's clear. I'm going to look in the fucking camera right now. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you think. This is the missing factor. It does not matter what level of skating you have if you did uh, the most amazing trick that anyone's ever fucking done. This isn't skateboarding where yeah. you do a fucking 10 hundred or whatever, or uh, whatever, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, or you do uh, in, in motocross, you do yeah, fucking yeah. double backflip or whatever, whatever. right? Triple now. No. Yeah, triple now, whatever the <laughs> fuck it is. No. All the components are being taken out, right? And you end up with a collaboration that isn't the full package. And that is my opinion. What is not only missing, but it, I'm trying to think of the name in, in English, but it, it, it minders in, in German. It, 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 it lowers yes. the, it lowers the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the value down to almost nothing. So let me tell you, when I say lowers the value and you have a full package like a Dustin Latimer or Josh Petty or even take Arlo, 
Yes. Or even take uh, take uh, yeah, take take Arlo, um, take uh, Aaron Feinberg, t- t- Brian. You understand the the, the 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 full package, right? Personality, panache, dedication, talent, uh, style. You know all these things. These are anom- anomalies, and deserve the status. Yes, I agree with it. I agree with it. You deserve that fucking status. Yes. When I tell you Dustin Latimer status, you automatically know what that status is. I get it. But you need to agree with me. You have uh, a couple million to choose from is completely different from when you have twenty or thirty thousand. So it's yes. mu- it's more it's much more likely that in five million or three million skaters, there would be six that would be here. Now in 20 or 30,000, much harder. But remember, at some point I made the decision, not me, I'm saying whoever the yeah. decision maker is, made the decision to eliminate two of those aspects. Which or they point? made the decision to eliminate three of those. Which are those? That's my, that's my point. That's my whole fucking point. All right? And then, after it's all watered down, what do you think the value of being a pro skater is? It's much less. I, I, on that, I need to agree with you. And really, that's all I have to say about, about yeah. that. So, I really need to round up this because I know you're like also, you also need to go. So. Yeah. My wife's going to be like, uh, so, what's going so on here? So, one quick thing. What would be the solution? Uh, cut uh, 90% of all teams. Oh my God, people will hate you for that, huh? You know? No, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cut 90% of all teams. What, but what do you mean by all teams? You, I, you all talk... teams, all teams, all skate teams. Pro teams. And all, whatever. every, every team. Cut them. So make them pay for their skates? Well... Or do you get, get them like, get them flow skates? Look, I'm asking, I'm asking just as a... Well, now, now I'm going to have to go take it back for you again, just so you understand my, my mentality, okay? When we're talking about a Richard Johnson or a Dominic yeah. Sigan or Abdiel Kohlberg or whoever the fuck it is, all right? Mm-hmm. They paid the dues to get to there. Okay. The Ricardo Linos, the fucking Richie Eislers and all these people. They paid the fucking dues to get here. They had to be on the flow. Oh my God, for a long time. They had to get skates. They had to evolve. They had to get better. They had to represent. They had to fucking be passionate. They had to work their way up to here. But don't you think Whoa, that... Whoa, stand by. Sorry, sorry. Because I want to make this perfectly fucking clear. Perfect, please do it. When that is not filled with heart, hard work, heartbreak, hardship, sweat, blood, tears, then by the time you get fucking there, yes. the value is none. Is not there. The value is not there. If you get everything fucking handed to you yes. because you did one good trick. All right? It's not the fucking same. No, I get it. I fully, I agree with you. But I, my question here, and I need to ask you this, is like, of course, I understand. There's a, there's a need for a process in order for you to get to the top. And that process involves, uh, let me make this uh, clear. I'm sorry for, for interrupting. No problem, no problem. It was the process. Let's talk about the process, okay? The process was that you worked your fucking ass off so that Aggressive Mall gave you a fucking t-shirt. Yes. And you rocked that fucking t-shirt <laughs> like there was no tomorrow, okay? Mm-hmm. Because they were like, oh man, he got a t-shirt from fucking Aggressive Mall. Yes. All right? He got a t-shirt from Intuition Skate Shop, right? Uh, this was a big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. All right? Or because you were part of fucking Eskozu. Yes. You're part of Eskozu. Eskozu going to take care of their own. You, you probably ride eulogy wheels. You probably fucking have razors, you know, whatever the case might be. Yeah. It's because you're a part of a group that fucking values you as being a part of their group. Yeah, they can work your like image. FP. You can work your image also in order you're for... You're not going to be a part of fucking FP 
if they're not fucking down for you. I know. And uh, I, I will say this, you know, it's like people, uh, people, you know, uh, sometimes I take a step back, you know, it's like I'm Mark Cordy to some people, you know, like, oh, Mark Cordy, Mark Cordy is just fucking a dude, right? But things I'm proud of, like, for example, is 4-3 featuring Mark Cordy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking nobody, right? Joe Navran and them, they probably did it like as a joke, you know, or something like that. But I mean... For you, it, it has a value, of course. 4-2, FP, you know, that's a big deal. <laughs> for me, you understand? I understand that. I fully understand that. But let and me go... I fucking... But I need to go back to where, where okay, we were. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go okay, ahead. sorry. So but the you, thing do is, you understand? I fully understand okay. that, the process. The, the, the whole the, the value. So, throughout the whole process, the only thing that I... It's not that I'm disagreeing with you, because I'm not, and if I would, I'd, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Sure. But it's that the world changed to the point that, imagine, back in the day, we were talking about getting clips on videos. You yes. would get a clip on a, if you would get a clip on a VG, it would be a big thing. That would be four VGs coming out a year. Four VGs. That's nuts. Now, you have... Look at Dave Payne. You, if, Dave Payne if Dave Payne thought your shit was good enough to put in a fucking VG... You were or Brian Bell thought your shit was good enough to put in, a, or Jan Welch, or whoever the fucking names are. That was my first thing. A clip you on understand? Jan Welch video that for me was huge. I had one clip in. If, a... if, if they thought, then you were, here's a cockroach, you were just under the cockroach. I get it. And that was your starting point. Yes, it, I fully understand. I, I'm making for me, it's a, for me to be in the US. Having Brian Shima watching me do a trick while Ian Rush film follows. like that was the, again the ten thousand people that's small nuts. town guy. That's like it's it's not even it's not or even in my dreams. At you know, the time it was nuts. Yes, but what I'm going to tell you now, it's the whole world changed to the point that when you had four videos coming out in a year, now you would have a Jump Street podcast, which is a completely different thing with. Comes out with an episode almost every week. You would have yeah. which power I like. I watch this. Yeah, yeah. Too, which you I have like, too, yeah. which you have like power slide. Uh, I would put power slide, but then USD too. Like USD coming out with three, four, five, six videos a week on their YouTube channel. So the way that uh, the media is being delivered changed. The whole train goes way yeah, faster. Sure. So sure. the whole thing, I get it. I fully understand and fully agree with you. The process needs to be there. You need to go through a process in order to, to, be, to get here and to be able to get the, the skate. But the, from what you said, there's two things that it's, one of them would be the process being a lot slower, a, a lot slower back then, making people appreci appreciate it more because it takes way more effort. It would take way more effort in the late 90s for you to be recognized, unless you were the first one, like Brooke Howard Smith is the first one to say, he was not good enough, but he was that early. But yeah, when, mean, you, yeah. when, when you had but millions Brooke of people... Brooke was do... a part of so many things. Yes. You see, and that's another part of the process, is like, Brooke is so respected. Because of... It's, it's like, was he the best skater ever? No, Fuck, he's the first no, one to say not that. not even close. But he was... People thought highly of him because... And I'm going to tell you the second thing now, which is the second thing that you said, which is being part of a group, being part of a crew, and that's probably one of the reasons. So, Brooke, I would... Even if he's probably, he's probably from the capital of New Zealand, from Auckland, right? But I would somehow uh, see some... Um, how can I say it? I could somehow associate with the way that he was doing his things and could... Look at him as a hero because, once again, the small town kid looking at someone who comes from a smaller country going to America. So what I'm trying well, to say... He's a pioneer. Yeah, what so, I'm trying to yeah. say with this is like, right. nowadays a lot more people, if they want to get here, yes, there is the internet. There is the videos that you can do on YouTube. There's Instagram. There's all that. But being part of a crew that got your back makes a yes. huge difference. Yes. So a lot of times people really need to do that example. You will see that with Nick Lomax who had to move from Manchester, which Manchester has an amazing crew. You have um, a couple of skaters that are just amazing, Alex Person and a couple more, but he had to move to Barcelona in order to be in a place where he can skate every day. People can actually see what he does, having like a local crew. 
That's what that's, that's what the that's conference did. The that's what the conference did to have like a crew, like a house in Barcelona where people used to live. Yeah. So at the end of the day, these type of things, people may need to think about that if they want to get there. There's the whole process. There's these crews that make a huge difference. Eugen Anin with this crew that they have in 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 Germany, like the the Bork, the the Borken Zoo, or I don't know if yeah, I'm saying it right. No question, but but um, um, again, uh, you made me think of Ali Benet. Uh, yes. As an example, is um, you? Uh, he's also a victim, in my opinion. You know, victim of the, uh, maybe victim of the evolution, maybe um, okay. because this was a guy who picked up the reins uh, after I left, um, had a, a unique influence on uh, team mentality, um, different style of leadership mm -hmm. or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, helped USD and uh, Power Slide aggressive products and whatnot along the whole conference. During, let's put it the whole conference. The whole conference uh, during a time frame that probably also needs a lot of credit, but uh, was a victim probably of coming after you. Uh, no, a victim of, of evolution. You know, it's like it's like at a certain point, everyone uh, everyone's opinion is important. Right? right. Everyone's opinion is. Um, has weight, you know, and 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 and, uh, and and that's my point of 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 the process is that, and 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 all these different aspects of it is, you know, who's running the fucking show? Yes, but and what's must, the end state, right? But it must not be easy to come after you, like with all his job to come after you and have these guys that some of these guys are the biggest names in the world, but. A lot of some of them yeah. when they came in, you were already there. Well, so they Demetrius need to was also. Him. I mean, a lot of people jumped in as like uh, a yes, team manager USA yeah. or team manager Europe or this, that, and the other. I mean, bottom line is is that, um, and, and I stand by it. You know, I don't mind fucking saying it. Uh, you know, when I was doing things and running things, I only had one fucking boss. That's Matthias. Yes, it makes a huge difference. I do as fuck I want. Yes, and Matthias. He, he trusted with his you. fucking blessing, he, and, he, and trust he trusted me, and he trusted me to do whatever the fuck I had to do to make sure shit went in a fucking thing. Remember, I'm still selling skates. Yeah. I'm still fucking working other things, and and so, so um, that was important. So I'm the USD enforcer. So there's Matthias, and there's fucking me, and then with me Bauer and all these other people, you know. But my point is this: you either do it. Or you don't do it, right? And if you don't feel that you can do it anymore for whatever reason, then you gotta, yeah, you gotta. And so, too many chiefs, right? At some point, too many chiefs, too many opinions, too many weather, and then it gets watered down. You know, I, I don't want to just reiterate everything, but um, I just want to say that you ask my opinion and I give you my honest answer. It's mm. like it gets watered down to a point where no one really knows. Being holds. being a USD pro. It's not that big of a deal anymore, honestly. Okay. I understand what you mean. <laughs> I'm not go again, I we had this conversation now, we've been having it, but I understand exactly what but you mean. But there was a time. Yes. When being named USD fucking pro was fucking life changing. Hmm. And everybody in the fucking world knew that that was some fucking crazy shit. But now it came to the point that the last three, probably four skaters that became pro for razors, they quit three, four months later. There you go. There you go. Anyway, thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, it's I will just finish time. this for everyone watching this. I just want to say thank you. If you got here, you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Send all the fucking hate mail to him. <laughs> no, you know, you trust me. Info at USD. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, you know. No, no, it's not eight man. It's like we we've been having a conversation. That's the good things about this. It's like people are entitled to have their own opinions, and like I'm not here just to say yes to everything you say. No, I, absolutely, I, yeah. I, I would hope that's not. what a, that's what a conversation between two it's a different fucking world. Yeah, 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 yeah. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, and if you never subscribe to these, like just press that red button, subscribe it, and there will be more of these. Subscribe to this shit, you know, because uh, if you don't mind me jumping in real quick, go for it. Uh, anybody who gives a fuck. Right? Anybody who spends time when they don't have to spend that time talking about uh, or trying to be part of the solution for the future and wants to reminisce and think about the good old days and things like that, 
uh, you got to fucking support people, okay? Uh, you got to support these people that uh, take their time out of their day to care about things. Thank you. Thank you very much. It means a lot, and especially by f coming from you, we have this conversation. So thank you so much, and see you on the next one. Uh, by the way, do you know why we all started skating? Because I always tell people to never forget why we all started skating. You know why? Why? Because it's fun. Because it's fun. <laughs> it's fucking fun. Cheers. <laughs> all right. Uh, the other one with the ring. The other one with the ring. Yeah, no, the ring? This, yeah this, this is my... Uh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't wear it today, um, but uh, I got it. And I'm happy I got it. Um, it's very special to me. Yes. You know, and uh, I got a picture of Matthias, you know, handing it to me or whatever. Um, you know, uh, you got to remember, bro, this is 25 year fucking anniversary. Amazing. 25 fucking years. <laughs> 26 this year. <laughs> I mean, insane. in June, I'm going to turn 55 years old. I was just a baby when I got your email. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 40 something. So, with that being said, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>